let's take a look here at what is happening on Bitcoin. And then we will go into when a dip may occur and what we think about this. So we have been taking a look here at the 60 day cycle. And yes, when we got the low here on September 11th, which again was right towards the end of that crypto mindset course enrollment period. Right. And then we've had not up only since then, but we've had a very, very nice up move since here. And we got a nice super chat coming in here from, uh, Ko Samui girl. Um, we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Um, but thank you for the super chat. Um, so yeah, we, you know, we pretty much timed the crypto mindset course to come out here when the market's, you know, nice and accumulating, which is great to see. And, um, we do have a new cycle low here, right? We previously had the cycle low here on August 22nd. You could still argue, right, that you had a cycle low here. You failed the cycle, right? A failed cycle means essentially you go one direction, but then uh, it doesn't do what it's supposed to. And here it goes the opposite, right? You could call that a failed cycle, but I don't think that's the, the correct way to look at it in the current market. The way that price is behaving, especially against this trend line, the uptrend from that cycle low period being held. We went under it for four or five days. It looked like we were going to break down for uh, a while going into the month of November. But then that ETF news, right? That's this candle right here, right? So if you just want one example of how good Bitcoin can do, right? Just off ETF approval, right? So this one day here, right? Which was Monday, October 16th, we had the false ETF approval. And that still has held price up above that 200 day moving average. So we went from 27,000 all the way up here to $30,000 within the matter of hours on that day, right? Bitcoin's price went up 10% just on the news, right? Now, when was a similar event in terms of uh, a really big movement in Bitcoin's price? You have to go back to February of 2021 when Tesla uh, announced that it had bought Bitcoin. What did the price look like at that time? Right around this time here, boom, baby, a nice, nice candle. So we had this candle right here on February 8th of 2021. Go back uh, and look at the Michael Saylor's timeline, right? Tesla announced that it bought Bitcoin that day and Bitcoin went up 22% in a day, 22, 23%. So on Monday, right, when we heard the ETF spot, Bitcoin ETF got approved by iShares, which is Grayscale, right? When that news came out, even though it was false, Bitcoin pumped 10% and then dumped 5%, excuse me, 5% and then kind of chilled off, right? But it is holding support right now. So what would I expect on an actual real news spot Bitcoin ETF approval here between sometime between now and January 10th, right? When that happens, I think we not because with that 10% happened within the early days. Uh, so I think we could have pumped 10% more. So what would it look like if we got a 22 or 23% move, right? From let's say uh, that price we had on Monday, what could have been if it was a real event? Well, <clears throat> here's what would have happened, right? You, you pumped up here 10% just within the day, and then you came back down that 5%. And um, okay, it was fake news, right? But if it was real news and we went up that full 22% or so, right? Similar to when um, we had uh, Tesla buy Bitcoin, you would start a new uh, bull run here. Like we already are in a bull run from a four year cycle perspective, but we would start another alt season, right? We would break Bitcoin uh, up here above 32,000, 33,300, it looks like, um, and some change, right? So if we broke above there on that day, right, from where we were at on price action, we would have had a really good, we would probably be at about uh, $36,000 Bitcoin right now, right? So um, we're going to talk about this when we get to the ETF news today. Um, and about 130 or $150 billion or $155 billion would likely enter the market just on Bitcoin's market cap which would, should bring us to that mid $30,000 mark almost immediately. So um, again, right, we could over a couple of days go up more like 20 to 30% on a Bitcoin, spot Bitcoin ETF approval. Now, now that people know a spot Bitcoin ETF is coming out, right, price could hold up a bit better here over the cycle. So 
do we dump back down to the current cycle low based on where we're at in the current cycle? I don't think so. I don't think we go back below $25,000. Is it possible? Absolutely. Is it going to happen? I don't think so. So let me give you guys my case for where I think we are at right now in the 60 day cycle. What cycle count is the most valid in my opinion? And then where, do, what does this mean for where price can go in the next couple of weeks? So if we just take our date range here and we go from the cycle low to the current cycle high, and yes, even though it was on fake news, right? It is still a legit price, right? The price action doesn't lie. So um, it's kind of like when you throw a rock into the water, right? You get ripples regardless. Now, were, were the ripples on the water supposed to be there? No, you affected it, right? So even if it was fake news that the ETF, Spot Bitcoin ETF got approved on Monday, right? Doesn't matter. Why? Because you just changed the atmosphere of the water, right? Everything is moving. So um, this is, even though that is on that price action, that is legit price action. So we have a high as of right now on the current 60-day cycle, we have a right translated 60 day cycle, which means we had the 60 day cycle midpoint here on October 11th. We did get a dip into that mid October dip, which I was telling you guys about um, prior to jumping into the crypto mindset course. We said mid October, early to mid October, right? It's going to be the best time to buy Bitcoin. Were we lying? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and so, where are we at now? Well, there are a couple options for what Bitcoin's price can do here. Um, based on price action alone right, and cycle timing, I'll give one information, but the real juice, in my opinion, is on the Elliott wave pattern of where we are currently. I do not think the current 60-day cycle high is in yet. I do think we come up here in the next couple of weeks, we have a potential to reach $31,000 Bitcoin all by briefly, right? And then I think we can roll over going into November. So we... Uh, where should we get a cycle high up to at least, right? If we are on a right translated cycle, which we are, right? We should have a high on day 45 or later. Now we are still in a, what do you call it? Crab market where we are accumulating, we're moving price action. So a day 35 high, even though it is less than a 20% chance, usually, right? Because the market is chopping sideways, we've had some odd 60 day cycle highs. We've had a 47 day high. That's pretty normal for a right translated cycle. 11 day high. That's pretty normal for a left translated cycle. But day 35, right? That was kind of a neutral high. Day 28, another neutral high here. Those couple neutral highs led to what? More sideways price action. So I do think we get another high here. And if we do, it will be around day 45 or later. So that should be uh, October 26. So about a week from now, right? If we do move higher, right? That target would be about 31,000, 31,500 here just in the next few days. Now, uh, I think we get a high before, uh, day 50 of the 60 day cycle, which would be October 31st. I think by the end of this month, right? We already have the high for the 60 day cycle in, um, we could go as high as day 55, which would be November 5th. But I, I don't, I think we will run out of momentum by the time we get to the end of October. And uh, if we have that $31,000 Bitcoin, that has several, several implications on long term price action of where I think we're going here in the next few months. So that will give us two things, in my opinion. It will give us how much downside we can experience in the next couple of months. So if we do get a dip, where would be some good buying opportunities? So Compton 310, I'll answer your question here soon. We're getting to that part of the uh, information here. Um, but again, I think we don't really go below 25,000. So what is the most likely price action in my opinion? So let's give it a day 47 high, a nice right translated cycle on October 28th, a couple days before Halloween. We get a nice right translated cycle high somewhere under, right? That uh high that we've received thus far maybe if you get really bullish you get a little bit of spillage over the top there maybe 32,500 but you really have to break 32 33,000 to really get a pump up to that 30,000 mid 30,000 mark or more so i do think we get a high here in the next sometime in the next one week right the high potentially could already be in we'll tell you where we need to break down below 
in order to know that the high is likely in, right? But I'll, I'll show you guys based on pattern here in a second, right? Uh, so I'll add the Elliott Wave uh, juice in here just a moment. Before we do, this is kind of how I will see uh, how I think price action will play out. So I think we get a bit of a pump here. And I'm just going to do this. Uh, we get a bit of a pump here going into that move. We get a cycle high. We end the month up there. Right, We start coming down into a cycle low. And then this is where things get interesting. So in terms of cycle timing, let's give it a full 60 days, maybe even up to 65 days since it was a right translated cycle of a low. Right, The last time we had a day 47 cycle high, we had a, oops, we had a cycle low here, uh, right translated on day 69, right? So let's give it a day 65 low just to kind of give you guys a little bit more time here, right? And we might not even go up as high as that 31,000, right? We might only come back up to just barely above 30K, right? It could be a, a relatively weak cycle high, just a little bit above there and maybe matching that seven uh, day cycle high here that we had at the early part of August, right? We might just kind of, peter out here here and then start coming down and then we could get one more boost to the upside here but not quite as much right into that new 60-day cycle about thanksgiving end of november and then i think we could break down here into another cycle low and we if we go low right if we break down from up in, in this area of price but back below let's say twenty seven twenty six thousand dollars right that's going to happen going into the end of the year and the early part of next year. So that would mean, right, if we get another 60 days from there, boom. What does that line up with? Around January 10th, right, or 16th, right? Somewhere in that region. If we were to put this on a strict 60 days for the current cycle, a strict 60 days, if we get the cycle low here on November 10th, right? then a strict 60 days would bring us exactly to another cycle low around January 9th, right? A day before that last period for a Bitcoin spot ETF to be approved. So today's episode, I'm going to make a few assumptions. Yes, reckless speculation, right? <laughs> We're going to make a few assumptions based on information that I'm going to show you here in just a few minutes uh, about the Bitcoin ETF, where we are right now. Ethereum spot ETF is also now in uh, play here for this bull market as well. We're going to explain all of that here. And then we're going to come back to the price action and be like, okay, so right now, as the market stands, we have a little bit of upside. And then we probably get rejected around that 30,000, 32,000 mark, right? We come back down for a cycle low early November. So I would say anywhere that Bitcoin's below 29 or $30,000 is still a good time to be dollar cost averaging into your coins. We come down here in early November. We pop back up. If we do get a really bearish cycle going into uh, the new year, into the spot Bitcoin ETF approval, maybe macro, right? Maybe there's more war than we expected, right? And it's not good times going to early January for the macro uh, economic situation. If that's the case, right, we could see price come back down here to that 25,500 mark, right? But again, I don't think we go below there. Now, why is that the case? So, Let's zoom out here, look at the weekly, right? And let's see where we are. So in terms of the weekly, we turn on the CC buy sell signals. We do have a cluster of buy signals here at 26,500 and below, right? Those have hit and we have our current sell signal on the weekly. The weekly close happens in three days and two hours, right? And we are currently above that 200 week moving average above 28,300. If we close above there, right? We then can continue into that right translated cycle. One, I'll give you guys downside targets. If we close below, I would say um, that 200 day moving average plus, let's put up that 111 day on there. Yeah, that 111 and 200 day moving average are converging at $28,000. I would say if we have a daily close below 27,500, right? Or 27. 300, 400, somewhere around the bottom of these candles right here and the bottom of the candle that we pumped up from, right? The, the low of that candle was 27,123. So if we start closing below there, and especially if we start closing below 27K, then we're going to come back to that mid 25K mark, right? So that's the downside risk of from where we're at right now. 
but I don't think the downside risk is that strong, to be honest. But if we take a look at the uh, trend that we have thus far, I'll turn off some of these drawings. You can see we have a five wave sequence. One, two, three, four, five, right? So we clearly had a wave one here, right? We had an A wave, B wave, C wave complete, right? But we might be getting a, a W, X, Y, X, Z with one more down move. Now, here's the cool thing about patterns, right? When we get into the ETF information, right? If we come back here to the daily chart, Oops. The cool thing here about ETF information is what if price action by definition should do this, right? We should, we have uh, our WXY, right? X coming up here and then we come into a Z. So this is what the price action should be doing, right? But if that spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved before January 10th, so we're going to talk about January 10th being the date that it should launch. And we're going to talk about the possibilities of it launching beforehand. If it launches beforehand, this price action here, which we get below 28,000 back down to 25,000, basically the range of price we had during the last crypto mindset course, we may, I think we get that price action again, right? At the end of year slash beginning of year. But if we don't, right? Spot Bitcoin ETF is likely the culprit for it because we have companies, corporations, organizations, Nancy Pelosi, everybody out here buying, you know, millions of dollars of Bitcoin, billions of dollars of Bitcoin out here. And the price was having a really fucking hard time breaking below $25,000 and it didn't, right? So if you have more people out here buying a spot or buying in uh, anticipation of a spot Bitcoin ETF, right? it could hold up the price. Now, there are some people who are like, well, the spot Bitcoin ETF has been on pre-approval for three or four years now. It's never going to happen. 